All right, guys. So before we start testing, uh, there is uh, several things that we have to fix on here. So for one, there was a problem with the uh, bench exit animation, and I already fixed that, so you shouldn't have that problem whenever you go to play yours. But there's a few things that we missed, and I did manage to fix it. So the first thing is that for some reason, and it may not be doing this on yours, uh, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that right there. But the main thing that's happening is we don't have a motion warping component. So we need to go ahead and add that. So we'll go ahead and add a motion warping component and set things up. And then I'll let you see the other problems uh, that are occurring before uh, I show you how to fix them. So we need a nav mesh. If your character doesn't have a nav mesh, you won't be able to move. So I'm just going to put this somewhat in the center. And you can press P on your keyboard to see the nav mesh. And that should be good. So, All right, so we need to drop in a character. And we need to drop in a bench. Go to your smart objects, bench, and drag out that blueprint. So now we're going to go ahead and play as is, and I will show you how to fix the problems as we come up against them. So there's going to be several problems. Uh, there's one problem that I can't fix, uh, and you'll see that one here pretty soon. So we'll go ahead and play it. And so right away, you'll see he walks over there to the entrance, but he doesn't do anything. If we go to our, our output log, you'll see that there's a warning here uh, by the state tree. And so the state tree is saying, on interstate, failed. Reason, invalid, secondary, actor, or role, none. And so, and so what this means, it's showing you the reference value. And so it's showing you that this has a valid reference. If this would have said no, then you would have known that it was probably the secondary actor, but it's not. Uh, this one says none. That's the value of the role. It's receiving a value of none. That's a bug. So I'll show you how to fix that. And also, you'll notice uh, over here on the bench, and actually you probably won't see this, but if you uh, press this trace and then uh, press start and let it run until it stops, then you'll see it stops. Now, why did it stop? Normally it won't stop. The reason why it stopped is because it hit a failure. And remember, we set up on state failed. We want the entire tree to fail. If we wouldn't have done that, you would have seen a, a bunch of little uh, diamonds stacked on top of each other all across here, uh, showing that it that it was continuously failing. So if you come down here, you'll see an X right here on play context anim, and everything seems to, to look okay. And so you wouldn't have been able to tell why it uh, failed on the context anim uh, just from looking at this, but... And I'm wondering why it doesn't show that value. No, it doesn't show the value. It's weird. Uh, but the problem is actually the secondary role, which it does not show inside of here for some reason. And this is the thing that's returning a null value. And I don't know why it's doing that, um, because we did set the value of it over here. You know what? So... If we come back over here, this is where our default values are. Oh, okay. So that's the reason why. Um, I don't know why that's set to none there. If we clear this and then set it back to bench, it should fix it. Okay. So be careful whenever you're uh, messing around in here because it looks like uh, that reset to default uh, parameter thing 
uh, button is not working properly with these. So that's the reason why that is occurring. And so now without having to manually set these and we still have these bound to this parameter, now it should uh, work. And so now you see another problem. He's walking over to this entrance, but he's using this slot. This is the one we can't fix. Uh, and I'll explain to you why. So on mine, I, I was only using one slot. I had one, the other slot disabled, so I didn't realize this, but the find slot entrance location, um, whenever it gets to the slot entrance location, it appears to be getting a slot entrance, uh, not the slot entrance for this slot that we're uh, using. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm assuming that's a bug, and I'm hoping that th that they will fix that. Now, in 5.4, this doesn't work at all, and so I'm assuming that they're in the process of fixing that, and that's probably why uh, that's not working. Um, they probably have it temporarily disconnected in 5.4. So we normally, you might think, okay, well, why don't we just use this entrance tags uh, these entrance tags that it's outputting. Well, the reason why is because in this case, it's actually useless because our selection method. So we can only select the first one or the nearest one. Uh, in some cases, the first and the nearest one will be the wrong entrance for that slot. And that's the reason why it makes this completely uh, useless in that under that scenario. I'll look for a workaround, but I think that they're fixing this. Uh, I think they'll fix this problem in the future. But the only workaround for it is to actually just disable these secondary slots. And I'll look for another way to actually get around this uh, limitation later, but it'll probably be a crude workaround if I do release one that doesn't involve them fixing uh, this right here. So just disable the is entry and disable the slot itself just to be safe. So once we do that, it should stop choosing the wrong slot. And so you'll see another problem there. And let's see. And it looks like he's actually gliding a little bit. And I think the reason why is because, let's see. Well, it's because he's coming out of a run. So actually you would want to uh, change his run speed to a walk speed. And since this is using a blend space, we can just slow this down to some arbitrary value without having to actually go in there and look. And, and let's just try 180. Uh, centimeters a second, and we'll see how that, yeah, so that's a little bit better. So it's not going to be perfect, but that's pretty good. Now, if your feet aren't moving quite the same way as mine, then it's probably because you forgot to set the uh, blend profile time the time blend profile. So if you come back over here into the matrix bench animations and open up that animation montage, the center one, you'll see I set my blend profile in to be that the time-based blend profile, which is the fast feet. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slow down uh, the blending of the feet into the animation, uh, giving it more time to better blend into it. You can also try increasing uh, this blend in time slightly, but don't do it, don't increase it too much, and it might help as well. So that, that doesn't look bad, but I'm not sure it actually improved it. Uh, if you don't like the rotation speed, but you still want the location or the warp translation uh, to move at the same, uh, for, between, 0 and 50, uh, 30, 30 frames, then you can actually decrease this down to where the rotation blends 
only across 15 frames by setting this down to 0.5, which is 50% of 30. And so if you do it now, you'll notice he will turn a lot faster. So that looks uh, a little bit better. So, yeah, so now we can actually set up stride warping and setting up stride warping will help prevent that foot sliding that you see there, which is ever so subtle, but there is uh, a little bit of foot sliding and it'll help with that. And I'll uh, go over that in the next video. Um, so actually, actually I moved my entrances in during testing by 40 degrees. I mean by 40 centimeters because before I enabled, before I fixed the motion warping, um, I had noticed it was offset. So I'm just going to subtract 40 from that and I'm gonna copy and paste, oops, I'm gonna copy and paste that over to the other one. And we're gonna try that out and see if that makes it look a little bit better. And it might. And no, actually it didn't, and it caused more foot sliding. So that was actually a bad uh, call on my part. And I hope that didn't just crash the engine. Okay, it didn't. Whew, scared me. Uh, save often, guys, the engine crashes a lot on uh, experimental plugins like this. So I will try to find a workaround for this uh, slot entrance problem, but I can't promise you guys anything. We might just have to end up waiting. Um, if I do find a solution, it's going to be a fairly crude one. By the time some of you watch this, though, th that problem will probably be a thing of the past. Now, we might end up upgrading to 5.4. Uh, since since we're having problems with this slot entrance thing anyway, there is a workaround uh, to this. It's kind of crude, but if I end up having to find a workaround for uh, the entrance offsets um, or the entrances per slot, if I end up uh, being forced to look uh, for that, then it's probably going to be, uh, it's probably, not going to be a big deal to use that crude method if I'm going to have to use a crude method for the entrance locations per slot. So anyway, like I said, we'll see. Uh, as far as the bench debugging, I'm not sure. I may have already went over this, but I've re-recorded this video several times. Uh, but you have to press this and then you have to press start. Now in 5.4, I think it'll automatically uh, record the debug uh, information for both of them uh, if they're open, but in 5.3 it will only do it by default, I believe, for the character itself, the character state tree. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I guess in the next video we'll uh, go over setting up stride warping, and I will see you then.